What's up my comic comrades? Today is going to be a jam-packed episode. The Joker War has officially begun and we're going to break down all the crazy details of part one that went down in issue 95 of Batman. We've also got this week's buy list with some Joker War tie-ins and at the end of the episode we're going to announce the five winners of our Silver Age comic giveaway. So if you were one of the thousands of Variant Nation members who participated, make sure to stick around to the end of the episode to find out if you're one of the five people to receive a piece of Silver Age comic book history. But first and foremost we want to thank today's sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a dope turn-based RPG that we've been talking about for a while now. It takes you to the dark fantasy world of Teleria, where you collect a team of heroes made up of dark elves, banner lords, members of the Sacred Order, and more. Then equip, train, and upgrade your team to battle your way to dominance. Yes, Raid Shadow Legends is free to play and is available for both mobile and PC, but there are a couple of pointers we want to give you before you dive in. For starters, when you first start playing, make sure you log in every day. Why? Because Raid has a couple new player programs that give you very helpful daily rewards just for logging in. And you definitely want to collect each and every one of them. The second thing is to work through and complete quests, missions, and challenges. All three of those help gather cool rewards, but completing the weekly quests specifically give you ancient shards, which help you build your roster of champions significantly. Another thing, even if PvP isn't your thing, don't neglect the arena. The rewards and tokens you earn for moving up in the tiers help a crap ton to build the strength of your factions. And as far as building your individual champions go, when you're getting started, you want to focus on the handful of champions you will be using to power through the story campaign and the early dungeons. There's quite a bit more, including the various tournaments that change every three days, but the tips I gave you will definitely help early on. You can also subscribe to Raid's guide on the world of Teleria to deep dive into the core mechanics of the game. Just go to the description and click one of our links to download the game, and all new players will receive 100k silver, one energy refill, 10 mystery shards, and the rare champion Slasher from the Lizardmen faction, which is a great champion to help you build in progress during the first few months of gameplay. Only new players will get those bonuses through our link, and once you're set up, you'll have them waiting for you to claim in your inbox right here for the next 30 days. Good luck and we'll see you there. And now let the battle begin with Batman 95. Batman 95 starts off in the past with Batman going to battle with the Joker for one of the very first times, with Batman speeding to the Joker's latest crime scene while Alfred's talking to him from the Batcave. Alfred says, you're thinking about them, aren't you, Master Bruce? The bodies. Batman says, it's not the bodies, Alfred. Alfred tells Bruce, you haven't been sleeping, sir, not since the case began. I know which crime scene images you've been rifling through over and over. It's their faces. You scarred them into your mind. As the comic shows us several really disturbing Jokerized people, some of the most disturbing I've ever seen, especially this one. Alfred then asks Batman, how many has this Joker Joker figure already killed. Bruce replies, 24, and I expect to find more bodies at the reservoir. Alfred responds, and then we bring his nightmare to an end. Batman tells him, I'm not sure this will be the end. It's difficult to put into words, Alfred. His motivations are beyond what I've encountered, not just in Gotham, but in all my training. It seems like an oversimplification to call him insane. I've seen more bodies than I can count, but there has always been a reason behind the murders. Whether it's a means to an end, or there's some kind of thrill in the kill itself, a pleasure they could only get this way. But to him, they're just me, this city, this whole world world, and the people in it, they're already dead in his eyes. He's just helping them along. Batman continues to say on the next page, I think all of this, these killings and the reservoir, I think it's some kind of test to understand my limits. I think he knows he's going to lose, but he already knows how he wants to come at me next, and the time after that. I'm the only person in the world he thinks is alive, and because of that, I don't know if this battle will ever end. And Alfred finally says, well, Master Bruce, at least you won't be waging it alone. You don't think I'd let you fight a murderous nightmare clown for the rest of your time on your own, did you? As both Alfred and Batman smirk. I really love what the first three pages of this issue does. It's a sequence set in the past that's meant to remind us how Batman and the Joker's relationship started, but more importantly, what it's like. The Joker is just pure chaos and essentially just wants to mess with Batman for all of eternity. As Batman is the only one of any importance to him on Earth, he's kind of like the yin to his yang, if you will. Joker has even said in the past that Batman is Joker's Bat King and the Joker is Batman's gesture. And a gesture's whole purpose is to serve a king and make him laugh. But obviously the Joker's sense of humor is beyond insane. What I'm saying is the first three pages of this issue does a great job of setting up this war between Joker and Batman. In any case, page four brings us back to the present time where we see Joker's henchmen chasing Batman in the Batmobile in the Gotham Aqueduct. This is intercut with news anchors reporting on the hostile takeover of Wayne Enterprises, as well as Wayne Enterprises legal representatives having outed a long-standing pattern of embezzlement connected to Bruce Wayne in his support of the vigilante known as Batman. Soon after, the Joker's henchmen have Batman cornered in the Batmobile at a dead end. So one of the Jokers gets out 
out with a rocket launcher saying, this city doesn't belong to you anymore. It belongs to him as he fires a rocket at the Batmobile. It doesn't completely destroy the Batmobile, but it does do enough damage for the thug to look inside. And when he does, he calls Punchline saying, hey boss lady, we got another shell. No bat meat in the inside, just gears, microchips, and burning leather. Punchline tells him, you know what? That's okay. We're just about finished hacking the main computer here at Wayne Enterprises. As we see a jokerized Lucius Fox who Punchline is trying to talk to, but he's fighting as much as he can, not giving her the answers she wants. Basically, Punchline is gathering all of Batman's tech for the Joker to use on the Dark Knight. Elsewhere, we see the Joker with an old man in Park Row, Crime Alley. We find out this old man Joker is talking to owns the Monarch Theater, which is the same theater Bruce and his parents left the night Joe Chill killed Bruce's parents. We also learn the reason why the Joker's talking to this old man is because the Joker is buying the theater from him. As he made him an offer, he'd be crazy to turn down, which really says something because Bruce Wayne has made offers himself over the years, which this old man has turned down. Anyway, as the Joker holds up the Mark of Zorro movie reel, which is the movie Bruce and his parents saw that unfortunate night, the Joker says, how many seats does this theater have? I wouldn't want my friends to run out. And the old man replies, your friends? The ones laughing? Joker replies, I can see them all right out this tiny window. They're just waiting for you. You and the rest of them. The old man says, the rest of who? And the Joker replies, Gotham, while laughing hysterically. And we see a bunch of Jokerized Gotham citizens sitting in the theater. Meanwhile, back at Wayne Enterprises Tri Corner Yards campus, we see Mr. Graves, aka the Underbroker, walk up to Commissioner Bullock and his police officers. Graves tells him, I've just come from filing a civil rights injunction to stop the police harassment of Wayne Enterprises and its owners. The mayor is on television right now insisting that you disperse the barricades surrounding Wayne Enterprises. He says you're likely to be replaced in the coming days. My client, and Harvey finishes his sentence, is the Joker. You can gum up City Hall and the courts all you want, but the boys and I here know the truth. We know who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Your client is a mass murdering piece of garbage, a stain that needs to get wiped off this city and this world. So you can take that injunction and shove it right up your butthole. Graves then tells Harvey's officers, I would remind you who bought the new headquarters and all of your new equipment. It would be a shame to take it all away. Harvey says, that was Bruce Wayne. And one of Harvey's officers says, Harvey, you're losing this one. After this, Harvey is forced to let Mr. Graves into Wayne Enterprises, but we see that Graves' driver is actually Batman. A lot of people forget that one of Bruce's skills is a master of disguise. Anyway, while the underbroker heads into Wayne Enterprises, Batman scales the building looking for a way in. But instead of having radioactive blood that allows him to stick to walls, Batman uses what seems like highly advanced electromagnetic suction. I don't know if electromagnetic suction is a thing, but it's Batman, so everything's a thing. He then proceeds to use some dope tech in his lenses that allows him to see everyone inside the building, all Arkham City style. Eventually, he makes his way inside the building via a secret entrance because, well, this is his building. And once inside, he says, computer, give me eyes in the building. I want Joker. But then a voice in the dark says, he's not here right now, as Punchline jumps out of nowhere with a knife attacking Batman. Punchline then says, oh, sorry, was this supposed to be a secret hideout? Your friend Fox over here outlined the six micro caves you have. As a Joker as Lucius on a screen says, I'm sorry, Batman, as Punchline continues to say, it's like you planned for every type of attack in Gotham City and had a different crisis cave to operate out of for each one. But this one's my favorite. Do you want to know why? This is the one you hadn't earned yet. It's the one you were going to unlock when you and Mr. Fox and Mr. Wayne had finished building your new Gotham City. Anyway, Punchline and Batman continue to fight. And mid-fight, Batman sees a brand new bat suit behind him, one that looks like it's out of Tron. And Batman says, I hadn't seen this, Lucius. Is this your design? And Lucius replies, no, found it on the computer. I thought it was you. So I guess later on, we're going to find out what this new bat suit is all about. Anyway, after this, Batman starts seeing fuzzy and Punchline goes, looking pretty rough over there, Batman. I heard Deathstroke got you pretty bad. Maybe you didn't get stitched up right. Oh wait, I know what it is. Easy to slip my mind since I've spent the last year building up my immunities. Batman then asks, what's happening to me? And she says, I filled your little cave with poison. It's my own blend. Some of the boss's stuff tweaked with a bit of fear toxin and then a little bit of venom so it doesn't kill you. Makes the withdrawal a hell of a thing though. Batman then says, need to get out as he sees a bat symbol and hears a voice saying, Master Bruce, not that way. You're going backwards. Batman Batman then says, Alfred? The voice then tells Batman he's taking it all. Your vehicles, your city, Master Bruce, you need to get out of here. As Batman looks out the building, we see the Night Climber from Batman issue 86 is just hovering there with a Joker smile painted on the front of it pointed at Batman. And the voice says, I'm sorry, my boy. I'm so sorry. We're all dead now. As the Night Climber unleashes fire at Bruce. And that, my friends, is the Joker War Part 1. This issue being Part 1 of the Joker War was a lot of setup. It shows us what this world is going to be like now that the Joker is in full control of Gotham and how hard it's going to be for Batman to fight him this time. But I gotta say, I think from here on out, we're gonna hit the ground running now that we fully realize what's at stake here and how the Joker is literally controlling everything. It's just gonna be so cool to see Batman fight the Joker with Batman's resources. That's just crazy. What I'm saying is, I think I'm really gonna enjoy the story arc. But as always, what do you guys think of the story arc thus far? Are you excited for the Joker War? Are you gonna continue reading it? Or are you just tired of the Joker? Let us know in the comment section down below. 
first up for the week of July 22nd, we of course have Batman issue 95. The Joker War has officially begun, as we saw today, and it's going to be a wild ride. Next, we have Batgirl issue 47. In this Joker War tie-in issue, the Joker comes looking for Barbara Gordon, and it has hints of the killing joke all over it. Third on the list is Empire issue 2. Three Avengers are trapped on the moon as war breaks out on Earth, and an ancient enemy reveals its scheme decades in the making. Next up, we have The Flash 758, Legion of Zoom Part 2. All I'm saying is The Flash has been one of the best titles DC has been pumping out. If you're a fan of the Scarlet Speedster, you need to be reading this title. And finally, we have another Joker War tie-in with Detective Comics issue 1024. The story of Two-Face reaches its end as Harvey Dent will at last find peace after decades of schism. But will that peace be in death or will it be a chance at a new life? All right, my people, the time has come to learn which of you will be bringing home one of five incredible first print pieces of Silver Age comic book history. With the prizes on the table being Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. issue 2, the first appearance of Inhumans in Fantastic Four issue 45, and the second all-time appearance of Black Panther in Fantastic Four issue 53. Flash issue 137, which is the first Silver Age appearance of the JSA, and lastly, the Incredible Hulk issue 102, which of course is the Hulk's first appearance in his very own title. And just to reiterate, the prizes in this giveaway will be selected via a lottery system. So the first place winner will get their pick of the five comics available, and the second place winner will get their pick of the four remaining, and so on and so forth, with the fifth place winner receiving the final book available. Now, without further ado, the first place winner of our Silver Age comic book giveaway with Comic Tom is Terrence Davis. Congratulations on winning the very first pick of the five comics available. Our second place winner with the second pick of the four comics remaining is Jesus Moose Contreras. First, your nickname is Glorious. Second, congrats, my dude. Next up, we have our third place winner with the third pick in this comic draft, and that winner is Isaac Portelli. Congrats, Isaac. Our fourth place winner with the fourth pick of the remaining Silver Age comics is Travis Barlett. Congrats. And lastly, but certainly not least, our fifth place winner is Griffin Reynolds. Congratulations on bringing home the fifth and final remaining Silver Age comic. But as we said in our giveaway announcement, each of these books is a valuable piece of comic book history. So no matter which one you land, it's a win. So congratulations to all five of our winners. And without question, we also have to again thank our great friend Comic Tom for making this giveaway possible. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to their channel and follow them on everything. Links for that is going to be in the description. And just like that, my comic comrades, that brings another episode of Variant to a close. But if you like this video, be sure to check out our Road to the Joker War video right here. And if you like our channel, be sure to subscribe, comment, and like. It helps us out. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.